Hey, what's happening? Welcome to the Pleasure Points Podcast. I'm your host, James Rohr. I'm super excited that you're here. Today's episode is a great one. We had a great conversation. I'm joined by Monica Arenas. She is a registered dietitian. She's an entrepreneur. She's owned a bunch of businesses. She's on our doTERRA team, and she is one of the co-founders of the Luna Fast. So we had her other co-founder on, Bianca, uh, was on a few episodes ago. So today it's Monica's turn. We have a really great conversation. She um, comes with a lot of enthusiasm and a big open heart. And um, well, I won't uh, spoil the episode for you. So I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. And remember that if you love the show, I would really appreciate it if you gave a good rating and a review in iTunes. I look forward to sending out some thank yous to people who have... um, put in a review, you know, so if I uh, read your review online here, I'm going to send you out a copy of a book or an essential oil, um, something like that. So I really appreciate you taking the time to review it and rate it and to share the episode and the podcast with your friends. It's going to help to spread the word so that everybody can hopefully uh, feel a little bit more at peace, show up, just be nicer and kinder to each other and uh, yeah, spread the love. So remember, you can check me out on Instagram at James E. Roar, and you can check out the relationship coaching stuff at invitinginlove.com. And Monica, you can follow on Instagram at feedmehealth. That's feedmehealth. Get it? She's a registered dietitian talking about food. Uh, All right. Without any further ado, let's welcome Monica to the show. Awesome. And we're live. Hey, Monica. Hi there. How's it going? Great. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for having me. Especially just fresh off of your explant surgery. I know. Should we just dive right in straight, and get into it? Straight off the, yeah. the butcher board. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So I'm curious, was there a moment when you knew that you wanted to have them taken out? Absolutely. Yeah. What, what happened? So I went out drinking with a friend, which is a rarity in my in my life now. I mean, I bartended for about seven years, so that used to be the norm, but these days it's just not, not. And, um, I had a few drinks. I didn't think much of it. And I woke up the next day and I had severe throbbing pain in my left breast for like three days straight. Wow. Like to the point where it was, it was my nerve, like I could feel the nerve system going straight, um, straight to like that area. And it was, it was freaking me out. And I had just had a friend maybe a month or two before who had just had explant surgery and seeing her changes was just like in the back of my head. And, and my, well, Bianca, my friend, my Mm -hmm. business partner and friend, uh, she put me in a breast implant illness group on Facebook. And that was just like, like, I mean, pretty much it all came together. Because in the last maybe five to seven years of my life, when I would go do checkups and get my blood drawn, it was, everything was relatively normal, but they would find that like my immune system was off or my white blood cells were off, or I was dealing with anemia or um, candida was always kind of an issue Mm. off and on. And then I just started realizing that all of these things were really lining up to be related Mm. to my body, not being able to fully detox and function at its prime. Mm -hmm. So the explants were kind of the next step. I mean, I don't want any fake shit in my body. (laughs) I I don't know. I didn't realize it when I was living with them until it was a health thing, you know? And then at that point I'm like, okay, well, you know, it is what it is and it's going to go. And I just pray that I look as good as I want to look and it is, you know, and so I did and it's been great. I mean, honestly, the surgery was so easy per se, honestly, really, I I didn't feel pain. Wow. They didn't like an M block for four days. So I didn't feel really for the first four days. And then I kind of did, but it was really just kind of pressure in my body and I had great results. I mean, I'm so happy. And I look at my before and afters and I'm like, why did I ever get them? Mm. <laughs> like, I never needed them. And I mean, my friends that have seen the pictures are like, yeah, dude, you're tripping. <laughs> like, why did you ever get them? I'm like, yeah. You know, how how old were you when you got them? I was 22. Yeah. 
And was that something that you'd always wanted to get? Like when you were a teenager, were you just like, I'm going to do this one day? So yes. And at the time that I did it, it was just a a, a point in my life where I was in a really bad toxic relationship. Mm-hmm. I was a bartender. So of course, you know, I, the night, the life that I lived in Miami, cause I'm not originally from here. It was just nightlife and this is the look and this is the style. And I never really right. fit in, you know, like I'd show up with my hair, like wavy air dried. And the girls are like, Oh my God, your hair, you're going to work like that tonight. And I'm like, yeah, like, What's wrong with supposed to put your hair? I have to iron it and blow dry it and it has to look perfect. (laughs) And it has to, you know, like I have to be like a Barbie doll. And it's just, I'm just a hippie, you know, California girl. I don't know. I don't care that much. But, you know, I did start to, at that time, feel insecure about myself because I was in a very toxic relationship and I just wasn't feeling light or good about myself. And so that at that point... I had started working at Live, and then the manager that hired me got fired. He went through like this whole thing. And then like a week later, the people that got hired under him were also let go. So that was me having no work for a few months. And I was like, okay, well now or never kind of thing. And I've always wanted it. So I did. And then having the explant surgery really was like a nine year chapter closure. Wow. Of just like... It's yeah, it really closed it. It really closed in like all just all these ideas that I thought I should be of myself, Mm. you know, and I was already accepting that when I get them out, I am who I am and that's amazing and that's enough. And so I think that also kind of helped the post-surgery be a little bit, the, the recovery be a little bit easier for me. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. Huge. Jen has a great story about when she moved to Miami from Colorado but how she was walking down Lincoln Road wearing those Chaco sandals. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And she was like, I thought I looked really cute. And by the end of the night, she was just in tears because she felt so insecure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I when I first moved here, I was like 16 years old. And I was straight up wearing like the... like ugh, I don't even know the name of them anymore, but they're like the almost like construction style boots, like, like the, the Doc Martin, the Doc Martin style, yeah. but like just, I was like, a, I'm from California, you know? Yeah. So like the style is just so different. I was like a rocker girl. And then yeah. here all the girls are like super preppy and this. And I was like, oh, I guess I should embrace my inner feminine side more. <laughs> Even though I'm like feminine, you know, yeah, whatever. But you know, you're 19, 18 years old. Jen, we joke now that she's got, uh, now after having lived in Miami for a while, she's got two modes. She's either slutty or hippie. (laughs) I like it. (laughs) So which one is for doTERRA? (laughs) Yeah. Well, that's like. The one with the heels? No, she's like, she's trying to create a third. She's trying to create a third version, which is like Midwest appropriate, you know? (laughs) And like Mormon event appropriate, you know, but it's like every time there's an event, like either we go to see my family in the, in the Midwest or, yeah. you know, she's got a doTERRA thing. She's yeah. like, I need stuff that like covers my shoulders and like goes past like mid thigh. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I was with her when she got her first pair of pumps. So you, really? that's why I, I oh, say amazing. about the heels because yeah. I, I love them. She's like, look, I got pumps. Like, yes, girl, you rock. And she's got great legs. So I'm like, girl, you should be wearing pumps all day, every day. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> where, where in California were you from? Bay Area, East Bay. Oh, um, nice. Grew up in the suburbs. Yeah, I went to college out in the Bay Area. I was where? in Stanford. Wow, yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. I grew up near Walnut Creek, Santa Ramon area. Oh, sure. Mm-hmm. Nice. What brought you to Miami? My parents divorced. So my my upbringing, it was a really interesting upbringing in the Bay. Uh, you know, like the whole hyphy movement. It's like very like... Mm-hmm. How do I say this? Like hip hop and like also hardcore energy. They're very like, we are who we are and this is it. And like, that's, that's exactly how it's, you know, it is. And they're just like gun ho about like YOLO. And, <laughs> and growing up, I, you know, it was, it was a very interesting upbringing actually, because I was Colombian. I am a hundred percent Colombian. I was raised very Colombian in my household. Colombia was summer and Christmas. No, no, non-negotiable. Mm-hmm. Like I would fight with my parents about it. And it, I never resonated with, I, I never al- felt aligned with the the people that I was like growing up with in terms of like just feeling in my comfortable in my culture, in my, in my type of 
home. Like I never, it never felt home. You know, mm. it's like, you're either Mexican, you're white, you're black or you're Chinese. You know, there was like, what's Colombia? Mm-hmm. You know, like my friends were really weirded out if I did the che- kiss on the cheek kind of thing. And I'm like, oh, they're like, oh, can we do the kiss on the cheek thing? And I'm like, yeah, like, of course. It's like my, my culture. But yeah. I never felt proud. You know, I, I never mm. felt proud of who I was. And so it was really interesting um, trying to fit the mold or f- feel like as a teenager, like I wanted to fit. And so you, I also got just like really involved with the wrong crowd kind of vibe where mm-hmm. it was just like, oh, it's easier to just like, you know, escape what you're feeling. And so drugs and alcohol was just such a big part of my upbringing. And, and it was like pretty norm there, you mm-hmm. know, I mean, yeah, it's pretty heavy there, like really big on binge drinking, especially. Mm-hmm. So it was, it was, um, something that I think my mom really saw and she was like scared for me <laughs> and she's like, oh, okay, wow. let's like, when my parents were divorced, she's like, let's, let's get up and, and go. And being Colombian, my mom, my mom was a realtor. So she had property in Miami. So ah, cool. we ended up moving when I was 16. So I actually came for my junior year in high school here. Whoa. I, yeah. didn't, I didn't realize that. Yeah. Which high school did you go to here? I went to Killian. Oh, yeah. all right. So I was in Kendall for, for the beginning. Yeah. So what was that like going from Bay Area crowd to like, <laughs> I can just, I can only imagine what it was like to go to high school in Miami. It was another extreme. It was amazing in its own way because I actually felt at home. Mm. I I felt more aligned with the Latin culture here, with the people here. I just felt like I assimilated more with them. Like they knew things that like people in California just didn't really get, you know, yeah. and, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's cool, but I just never felt comfortable mm-hmm. being who I was. And so I think I, in California, tried to really be accepted by my peers and, and try to form around that, which got me into trouble and got me away from my own essence and sure. who I really am. And so coming here was such a fresh start. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was like, in California, I was pretty much like skipping school, getting in trouble, like no doubt about it. My parents were like, ah. Yeah. And in, in Miami, I was straight A's. I mean, I was like straight A student. I loved all my classes. I was just excelling. I was back. I grew up doing dance and gymnastics. So I was like mm-hmm. kind of back in that. And, and it was just such a different environment for me to really thrive and just find myself more. Mm. Mm-hmm. Cool. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. I think about that. Like I've got a seven year old. And so I think about like moving and like, you, you know, I grew up hearing stories of like families moving because of kids and all that. And yeah. it's like you know, when you're like starting your career and stuff, it's like, that sounds crazy. But then it's like, now that I'm a dad, it's like, oh yeah, no, it makes sense that like, if my son wasn't thriving where he was, like, you know, you do whatever needs to happen in order to make that happen. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, My mom is really, really clear about that. (laughs) And so now, so then you end up in Miami where the question is more of like, are we kissing on one cheek or both cheeks? (laughs) Right. It was like, oh, like it was really cool. Like my first day of high school. So my mom had a best friend here and she has a son who's a year older than me. So my mom made it so that I went to high school with him and I had a friend. So I remember my first day of high school, I took a book and I'm like, if I don't have any friends or if I don't have lunch with him, like I'm just going to read my book and just like have lunch by myself, you know, like, I don't know. It's my first day in high school in Miami. (laughs) And we had the same lunch and we, he introduced me to all his friends and he's like my, my brother. He's like a cousin to me uh, nowadays. And that day we drove to South beach and we jumped off the pier and it was just so cool. Like I was like, all right. So it was really nice to have someone to kind of introduce me to some of the, the people in the community. And then of course I made my own friends and yeah. That's funny that you, you talked about the lunchtime. For as long as I can remember, the question my mom has always asked, like on the first day of school, was, did you have somebody to eat lunch with? (laughs) And then when we got to be adults and like any time any of my siblings and I started a new job, Mm -hmm. my mom still asked that question. Like the first day of the job, it's like, did you have someone to eat lunch with? (laughs) That's so funny. That's sweet. (laughs) That that's like my mom's main sort of like, like thing that she's most concerned about. She and Aquarius. Don't eat by yourself. Uh, Scorpio. Scorpio. Okay. Yeah, she's like, I just don't want you eating by yourself. Aww. And like, you know, when we get into the research of like loneliness and, mm-hmm. and food and you're a nutritionist and yeah. it's like how the energy is different when you're eating in a good mood and like how that supports digestion and stuff is like, it, it's, you know, now there's like like research behind it, you know, yeah. but for her, it was like a mom's concern of like, just don't eat by yourself. Oh, so intuitive. <laughs> yeah. So how did you get into, into studying nutrition? 
So, all right. So I, I'm going to close in the whole story of actually me moving because it's very right. related to it. So when I moved here with my mom, um, it was just us. And that was in, in August. So like right before school started. And my grandmother's birthday was in, in May of the next year. So we actually decided, so I was always in, in fitness and health and like interested in that. Mm-hmm. And my body was very much it would fluctuate depending on what I would focus on. So if I wasn't doing like sports, my body would, you know, I would gain weight or if I wasn't eating well, my body would, would change. Like Mm. I could totally notice the difference. It was very sensitive. I was very sensitive to it and I was aware of it. And I was more about like the fitness dance side of it. Cause Mm -hmm. that's like what I love. I love movement. And so with my mom, we ended up going to visit my grandma's surprise her for her birthday. And my uncle rented a bus for my grandparents to, for my grandparents, all their friends. And we, we went to go to his house to celebrate my grandma's 85th. Mm. We ended up hitting a car and uh, my mom passed, my grandfather passed. And it was like a very tragic Ooh. accident for my grandmother. Wow. So my grandma, it's like this whole other backstory, but like my grandmother pretty much lost all her kids and her husband. And she lived to be three days before a hundred. And she was like, wow. I don't want to live to be a hundred. And like, alone. That was like her biggest fear. Wow. So that changed my life immediately. I mean, I didn't come home. I went to the, you know, I, the whole like, Oh, we're spending the weekend to celebrate your grandma's birthday. was like, no, like I stayed in Columbia recovering. I was only presented enough surgery. I moved my seat to let my mom sit there. Wow. And just the whole, my dad happened to be in Columbia like out of the blue. Wow. You know, my parents were already divorced. Yeah. And so, I mean, I stayed for a few more weeks and I I really dealt with that for, for quite some time, like a good six months. Mm -hmm. You know, my, my dad was living in California. So he decided, you know, we decided the best decision was emancipation. My brother ended up, my older brother ended up moving to Miami and living with me until I was 18. And so, that kind of was just like get through high school kind of thing. Wow. <laughs> and figure it out. Yeah. So that's where I really started to learn how to cook. Like that's where I really had to learn how to figure out how to like make my own food and figure it out. I just didn't know, really know how to cook anymore. <laughs> like my mom always kind of cooked for me. Wow. So that's really kind of where it stemmed was just like me getting into nutrition because I needed to feed myself and my brother who's older, but I was kind of like the loser boy. The I was like the caretaker. I was the adult. He's accepted. I'm the older sister who's seven years younger. And so, over over some time, my friends started asking me like, "Hey, like, well, you know, what are those recipes? Like, what's that salad that you're making? And like, this is really good, and that's really good." And I've been a huge fan of science my whole life. Mm-hmm. So, when I went to college, I wanted to go for public health. That's kind of where I was seeing myself. Mm -hmm. Um, Kind of wanted to be in like the industry of food, but like not really sure. And then I took an intro to nutrition course and it was like, it all came together and I was like, done deal. Like, I love science. I love the human body. I love food. Like, perfect. Right. And so from from there on out, I mean, from 19 years old, I created Feed Me Health. Mm -hmm. I like made that up and just, I've just kind of like worked with that and just felt that calling to really help people have like create a healthy relationship with food. Cause mm-hmm. I mean, I've gone through all the different transitions with it myself. Yeah. If we can go back to the, to the car accident, mm-hmm. like when you think about that decision to give up your seat or to change seats, like what, what was, what's that like for you? Like, like, is that, is that a decision? I mean, I'm just trying to imagine, like I would, I, would I had to make peace with that. a lot of it. Yeah. I had to make a lot of peace with it that morning. That was, so my uncle rented a, we were in a bus. Okay. Right. So yeah. it was all my grandparents, friends, my grandparents and my mom and her two friends were actually going to go in a car with her friend. Mm. And I went to go get in the bus when the bus got there. And my mom's like, hey, are you going to come in the car with us? And I'm like, well, why don't we just all ride in the bus? Mm -hmm. And then they all decided to get in the bus. Mm. And then my mom was sitting further ahead. And then I was sitting with her friend in the back row. We were all in the back row with my cousin, his wife, his daughter, and like her friends. Yeah. And then we called my mom back and we're like, hey, come sit here. And I was like, yeah, I'll I'll come sit to the left. You know, and that was it. And then... um, 
And it was just the, I was the one seat that didn't have any, I mean, I have minimal scars. Yeah. And so I just had to make peace with it, really. Like, mm-hmm. I couldn't sit there and, and think about it. My uncle, I think my uncle developed cancer from being the one that I think he felt the responsibility, the fact that, like, he killed his, his best friend, his sister. He right. His father passed. His mother's, you know, lost all her friends and the whole right. thing. I mean, right. so he told me straight up. He, he was, like, my spiritual father in so many ways. He's really... And he, um, he was like, listen, like you just don't get in your head about this shit. Like just move forward. Yeah. And, and so, you know, it just, that's just life. Mm -hmm. Life wouldn't have put me in the places where I am without that Mm -hmm. having to happen. And as much as I would love to have my mom here, I also know that she is with me. And so like having that, building that relationship with her again in this other realm Mm -hmm. has really been a really powerful journey for me. Yeah. I was, I was going to ask if like in all of the healing ceremonies and, and different things you've explored, you know, how often, or if you feel her and like what that experience is like. So I numbed out pretty hardcore, (laughs) you know, like I was pretty numbed out for a good year or two. And then I partied here. That's pretty good if it's just a year or two. I mean, I maybe a little longer, you know, like I had a high school boyfriend, like we went out, we partied, we had a blast. Like, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I was, I had a fun time, you know, in quotations because my emergency sign in and out was my brother and my boyfriend at the time. You know what I mean? So it's like, it was a really easy way to distract. And I think around 23, um, I discovered yoga and a friend of mine introduced me to Kevin Walton. I'm not sure oh, if you've sure, met yeah. him and just, yeah. um, just yeah, this whole great. other vibration of, of being and living and thinking. Yeah. And I think at 23 was when I started kind of locking myself in my apartment and mm-hmm. just playing guitar yeah. for like a week or two and just crying hysterically and yeah. just like processing what I was feeling and just accepting myself and accepting the loss and, and being okay with it, you know, mm-hmm. and, and just being able to like speak on it without having such heavy energy charged to it, you know, making that peace. Yeah. So, so yeah, that's, that's kind of where I started to work with it. Mm-hmm. And then maybe in the last few years, I really started inviting my mom back into my life and like asking her to be with me. Like I didn't, mm. I actually did a family constellation. Oh yeah. I like that. A few years ago. Yeah. And I was like, Oh, I'm here to talk about like, you know, like my father or something. Like I was like, yeah. I need to heal my relationship with my dad. Right. And at the end of it, it's like me with like all these people standing behind me and I'm in tears crying yeah. and they're like your mother and your grandmother and your whole family is supporting you. And I'm just like, Oh my God, I'm really supported. Cause I really just, my family are my friends here, you know, like I love my dad and we're close, but you know, he's in California and our relationship only goes as deep as each of us allow it to, Mm -hmm. you know? So I find depth in, in a lot of of the relationships with my friends and family through that. Well, and you've created a great community here, the way to see, you know, how you guys all support each other and, you know, Bianca was on the show and stuff and, you know, I know we've got the oils and stuff, but it's like, you know, to see, the community that, you know, you're a part of and you've helped create in Florida is awesome. You know, down here in Miami, it's like, I'm really grateful for it. I'm really grateful for it. And honestly, like my friends have helped me in more ways than most of my family has, you know what I mean? And, and, and it's reciprocated, you know, it's like, we're here for each other and friends do become family. And the fact that we can work and thrive financially and grow in that realm as well is right. what has made doTERRA be like, oh, thanks, doTERRA. Like now we're leveling up and we're even better of friends because now we don't have to worry about having to go clock into some other business. Right. <laughs> like we can just chill at my house or go to the park and like work. Yeah. You know, so. Jen went to get a massage the other day and she enrolled the massage therapist. And she's just like, <laughs> I, love I need to do this now. Like this is, this is my new, uh, you know, business plan. I'm just going to get massages. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, like t- t- <laughs> you can literally create whatever you want, whenever you want. You yeah. just have to decide and do it. And that's, what I think makes doTERRA such an amazing opportunity for people. And you don't have to do just that. Like you can make it a part of what you love to do. Have you gone back and done more family constellation work? 
I haven't, and I would love to. It's supposed to, I've actually never done it, but I've had a bunch of clients who do it. I was friends years ago with a facilitator who did it. And mm-hmm. the stories that I hear, the anecdotes are amazing. Yeah, you know, insane. and like I had this one guy, he did it. I think he did it because he wasn't getting along with his, his brother or his dad or something. And the um, the facilitator said to him, she was like, listen, when you do this work, like what happens is it creates this ripple effect that goes to like all of your family. Yep. And it's like stuff like family. It wasn't even part of the work that we did directly. Like they're going to feel it and you're going to start seeing changes. Yep. And so he did the the session and he had the like nice breakthrough. And then he was telling me stories. He was like, and then like four days later, two cousins that had been fighting for 20 years, they just like started healing it and started Mm -hmm. talking together. And then like this cousin and this aunt and like, there was all of these things. And, uh, I love that to think about like the ripple effect, you know, yeah. when some, when one person makes the decision to like come from a place of love and to be an advocate for healing and for connectivity, you know, the ripple effect that that can have. And yeah. people are moved even though they don't know why they, they can't identify yeah. the force that moved them. Yeah. You know? So that that's, uh, I, I love hearing the, the family constellation stories. Honestly, it's, and that goes into all tor- all sorts of healing modalities, really, because mm-hmm. I, just healing myself and the stories that I was carrying and, and feeling and, you know, being able to talk about it with my father, seeing it from a different perspective, talk about it with my brother, just like anyone in my family. It is just the more we heal ourselves, the more we can also help just bring more clarity and communication and just heal the, the wounds that I think that sometimes we just bury. Mm-hmm. And we just don't talk about it ever again. Like, yeah. oh yeah, it happened, but like, psh, we're not going to talk about that. And you know, like at some point, I told my dad, I'm like, hey, like after the surgery, I realized I'm like, I s- felt very abandoned by you, mm-hmm. you know, and I still struggle with that. And the, he's like, oh, I never abandoned you, and he gets very defensive. I'm like, listen, like right. I'm not here to like, you know, judge you or tell you like what you did was wrong. It's just. I, this is how I feel. Mm-hmm. And I, I want you to just understand where I'm coming from. And, and even that alone has just brought more closeness to the relationship and, and it just feels better Yeah, all around. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, to have that, to have that risk, right. To take the risk, to just be open yeah. you know, and to explore <laughs> yeah. and to dive in. Like I did ayahuasca once mm-hmm. and you know, that's like the big kind of the deep dive, you know, mm-hmm. and like my experience was, was very cool. It was interesting. It mm-hmm. wasn't, I was going into it like in a really good place, mm-hmm. but you know, someone else that I was there with, like had this huge healing with like her family, you know, she saw like, yeah. all, like all these relatives were coming and she like had this whole blessing. Wow. And, and then in New York, I was doing, uh, I was doing these, this combination of psilocybin with MDMA mm-hmm. in a sound ceremony. Mm, wow. Uh, amazing yeah. this is like this is next level integration of like all of these different techniques and so yeah. you know we would do the the psilocybin with the mdma and ever it would be timed right mm-hmm. so the facilitators would tell people when to take and how much mm-hmm. so that everybody's on like a similar thing and then we would use different instruments so it would start off I don't even know, you know, it would be like, you know, rattles and chimes. And then, you know, maybe they do the Koshi, you know, the Koshi bells. And then, you know, the, the big sort of the peak is the gong, right? Mm. And so it would just be this epic gong. But it's like a very controlled experience where you're like laying down, you got the blindfolds on and, uh, and it's very meant, you know, they call it doing the work where you're like really journeying inside. Mm. And the combination of the medicines was great because you've got the, the psilocybin, which is going to give you like the visuals, right? It takes you kind of inside. And then with just amount, a little bit of the MDMA, it's like an explosive heart opener. Mm. And there was a woman there who, after the experience was, was saying that uh, she had been raped in college. And during the journey, she saw herself at a dinner table with the guys that had raped her and she forgave them. And Mm. she was like, and then they all started crying, you know, and like she felt the ripple effect there. And like that combination of things, like the the visuals with the psilocybin and then then with the MDMA, it's like, you can't be angry. Like you can't harbor resentment when that's like flooding through you, you know? I know. And uh, I had, right before Jen and I got engaged, I I had a ceremony that I was doing up there and... uh, 
there was like, I had this like big thing with my ex-wife, you know, I was mm-hmm. like, and I was feeling really good with her. And like, I felt great yeah. about stuff. And I knew that, you know, I was going to ask Jen to marry me. And, but during the the music, the guy, this guy was playing for like four hours. Right. Wow. And so he took a break and he put on some singing and this woman had this like really powerful, like Middle Eastern singing, mm-hmm. you know, and it just brought me back to my ex and her like opera singing and like what that's like to have a dream and to like not have the success that you want and to mm. still want it and to be building. And like, I like the MDMA, I just had all of this like empathy that Compassion. I didn't even know. Yeah. Like it was like, and I was just like, wow, man, I totally missed that. Like when we were married, I was stressed about this and that and the other, you know? And it felt so great to like make peace with that, especially when I knew I was gonna propose to Jen like in yeah. a month, you know? And so it was like, and this, but it's like, having the willingness to step out of the comfort zone. Yes. Right. Because it's like here we're talking about substances in this yeah. case. Right. But anything to just be like, okay, like I, I want to be more heart centered. I want to be more open, you know, and like, God help me. What's that going to look like? <laughs> you know, honestly, I'm so grateful for plant medicines. I think that it is the most healing way now the integration portion is what's really important for sure. You know what I mean? It's not like, Oh, like let's go get high. And like, all my problems are going to be solved. No, (laughs) like maybe if you sit with it, but you have to explore it and be open to exploring it. And psilocybin, I mean, they call it ninos Mm. in like the medicine world and ninos, it brings out the inner child, you know, uh, San Pedro also is very heart opener. Um, Ayahuasca for me wasn't that like it was it was dark for me like it wasn't uh, not dark where it's like I don't know it's just I think also the circle and the group of people that we were around where it's just yeah. like a heavy energy a lot of people what they were going through so I I, ha- I can't say I've had like breakthroughs with ayahuasca right ninos have really been just one that I can sit and just. I mean, stare at a fire and heal things from like my childhood. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what? Where would that come from? And yeah. I'm like, well, I feel better about it though. <laughs> so it's like, cool. And, you know, plant medicine or no plant medicine, music mm-hmm. is another aspect of what you're saying. Like sound healing music right. for me has, it's just this wave mm-hmm. that you can either self play or just listen to and just really just relax. Yeah. And I think we all need to just chill a little bit more and right. be softer with ourselves and be okay with what was, you know, yeah. I think that's where we really get wrapped up. These people that were facilitating the experience in New York, they weren't using the crystal sound bowls. They liked the metallic ones, the, mm. like the Tibetan Tibet. ones, mm-hmm. because of all the overtones. Wow. And they're like, so when you're listening, like you can kind of ride these different waves nice. you know, of the sound. And it, it's amazing. I've done San Pedro once. And it was crazy. It was when I used to be really sick. So I used to have inflammatory bowel disease. Okay. And I was I was just really sick. And so we, I, we did San Pedro. This is in San Diego. We went out to the, to the desert there. Yeah. And um, I remember I was sitting and I wasn't, it was like, it was so subtle, the onset. Yeah. That I wasn't even sure if I was like feeling, feeling anything. Yeah. And it wasn't until like it wore off that I was like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Like what, what just happened? But yeah. it was so loving. It was so yeah. chill. And I, I, I was sitting by this, this creek. We found this little waterfall, like, you know, in the mountains there. And, uh, and I was sitting there and I, it was like, I felt, it's like, I felt this energy start to gather around me, which mm-hmm. I felt totally sober before, but mm-hmm. this was, this was like, you know, it was like the gathering you mm-hmm. know? It's like when all of a sudden you're like, Oh, I'm in ceremony. Like, yeah. the, like the, our ancestors have like the relatives are here. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and the it's spirit like, people. <laughs> yeah, totally. And this woman like looked at me and, uh, and she showed me and she goes, okay. She goes, you do a great job of receiving energy from the heavens, right? So mm-hmm. I was like, I was in acupuncture school, so I was like really in that. And it was like, okay, so I saw all of this like yang chi mm. fill the upper half of my body, right in right in like the solar plexus, mm-hmm. right? So everything up was blue. And then she said, you do a great job of bringing energy in from mother earth. And I, so I see all of this like nurturing yin chi mm. coming up my body, right? And it's like right there. But then there's like this gap. It's like that. You ever seen that Neapolitan ice cream? It's yeah. like got the three colors, right? Yeah. I think that's what it's called. It was like that, you know? So I've got like this beautiful earth chi. I've got this amazing heavenly chi. And then there's like this void. Mm. And she looks at me and she goes, and you do a terrible job of letting them intermix. 
And then all of a sudden I see the the Tai Chi symbol, the yin yang symbol, yeah. you know? And so all of a sudden it's like my solar plexus turns into the like this melting pot mixing of like wow. the heaven and the earth chi. And I still think about that shit. I mean, it was like, it was so profound and it was yeah. so accurate because yeah. it was like, it was like, okay, I want to be like, you know, let me receive from the heavenly father and let me receive from Pachamama or, you know, yeah. whatever. And just like, and then it's like, yeah, but how, how are you showing up in the world? Like you're not showing up integrated. You're not like, actually like mm. doing the alchemy. And yeah. it's like, that's where the chi, like one of the definitions of where chi comes from is that shifting of yin into yang, mm -hmm. right? It's like, as they can go back and forth, dance. it's like, it creates that chi. And if everything is so stiff and rigid, right? I love that you love dance. Like if everything's so stiff and rigid, like you can't express that chi into the mm. world. For me, the most healing medicine that I ever did was combo. Mm. Combo, like just like, catapulted me forward i mean it just threw me into that's like DMT, into my right? spiritual path or is um, that the is that the one that just purges i get these it's confused. the purging it's yeah the it's purging the purging okay. it's so not no, bufo yeah okay bufo was amazing like that that was <laughs> that was like if you guys could see the smile on her crap. face <laughs> like wow like when i did bufo i was like this is heaven like this is this I've is what this is what it is like oh my for me i yeah. was just wrapped in love Wow. Like I literally was just like, ah, like I'm just laying there like, wow. Like cool. that was just an, an amazing experience, yeah. you know, but the combo, it it's when they, they burn your skin very mm -hmm. lightly and mm -hmm. then they apply a venom yeah. from a frog that's safely extracted. And then sure. they, they let it sit and it goes in, it goes through the blood brain barrier. It goes into the brain. It scans the brain and it says, okay, like where do you need cleansing? And so it goes straight to those organs or those body parts and you will start to feel it there. Wow. Um, the first time I did it, my I thought I was having a heart attack. <laughs> sure. Your heart's pacing because you have venom in your body. But right. when I was purging, the woman was like, your heart chakra is opening. Wow. And I could literally feel my heart like, like yeah. trying to open. Wow. The second time it cleansed my liver in ways that like, I mean the second and third time we, we really targeted cleansing my liver because you know like past use and drinking from bartending like sure. it was just a toxic buildup right and since then i mean did you have your implants during this time too yes interesting i did actually yeah and so i'm curious to know what any kind of medicine would be like now without having anything anything synthetic in my body really yeah that's what i'm really curious i mean like I said, like my eyebrow hair has been growing in and in, in places that I was just accepting, like, oh, I'm just getting older, you know, or like, yeah. you know, losing the rosiness. And so uh, going back to the combo, though, I mean, that that to me really just opened me up to just another level of understanding of myself. Did you do it like three days in a row? No, it, you do three just... in a month. Ah, OK. All right. So to like one week, one week, one week. Yeah. I have a friend of mine in New York who um, he did that. And he was, he'd been taking Rogaine because he was losing his hair. Mm -hmm. He was like, in his, I think he was in his mid twenties. Mm -hmm. It was happening. So, you know, self-conscious ego, all the things. And, uh, and he did that. And he was just like, I felt like the effects of the Rogaine in my body. And he was like, I was purging all of this like, wow. garbage. And wow. he was like, I have never touched it since. <laughs> you know, it's funny because the night before you're supposed to fast yeah. the day of, and you have to drink like almost a gallon of water. And that's what you puke up and all this jazz. And the night before I had sushi yeah, and I kept saying, when I'm purging, I'm tasting metal. I'm tasting metal, metals coming out of my mouth. And she goes, well, I said I had sushi last night. And she goes, yeah, that's because there's mercury in fish and your body's actually excreting it right now. Wow. And I stopped eating fish after that. I'm like, I'm good. <laughs> you know, like just I'm vegan now, whatever, you know, I'll eat eggs here and there, but the, you know, yeah. 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 It really, really, you become so much more sensitive to yourself, to everything around mm -hmm. you. And, and I think we've become so desensitized in, in this day and age within the matrix, what I call it. It's like this like busy world where you're just distracting and, and we need to be more sensitive with everything, with ourselves particularly. Yeah. And so you've definitely, so you've taken all of these experiences now and you've put them into your new work with fasting, right? Which is already yeah. like, from what I've seen, it's like, it seems like you actually had a pretty big pivot from yeah. like how you used to approach nutrition and your clients to Absolutely. now like really appreciating um, fasting and, and sort of an alternative approach. 
all the plant medicine, exactly what you're saying, like all the plant medicines, the spirituality that I've done the work for myself has changed the way that I work with my clients and has changed the methods that I use. Because before it was just very trained Western, like, okay, this is the diet plan. This is the protocol. This is what you do. This is that. And I dealt with a lot of emotional eating. I dealt with all sorts of eating disorders growing up. And I understood that the emotion and the relationship that we have with food, the, all of that is really the the groundwork, that foundation of how you eat, your body, everything else is a reflection. Mm-hmm. And that is just like the, the, you know, the base of it. And so the more I have really explored my own spirituality, the more I've also come to understand you know, like the bigger picture of it all. And it's, you can call it mindful nutrition. I mean, I've had practitioners that I've worked with be like, uh, you just need to give them a, the diet and it's got to be this. And it's not, you know, you got to count the calories and worry about the grams. And, and I'm like, listen, they're emotionally eating. Right. You can give them all these prescription drug pills to lose weight and inject them with all this stuff right. and put them on the shitty diet, but they're never going to have a healthy relationship with food. Mm. And so, I mean, I've probably <laughs> since like 25 years old uh, in all of my work have already been tapping into the mindfulness with nutrition and then the fasting. When the fasting came around, that's when it just like took it on another level. What was your first experience with fasting? So... I was actually always afraid to do fasting. Mm-hmm. And when I I had a, a coach trainer who introduced me to a crystal acupuncture that he did on me, mm-hmm. I remember one night he's like, okay, so tonight you're just not going to have dinner and you're just going to eat tomorrow. And I'm like, oh, what? <laughs> like, but I'm going to die. <laughs> and he's like, no, you're not. You're going to be fine. Like, give it a break. Because he knew I was dealing with emotional eating. Sure. And I did it, but I still struggled with the idea of it. And what I started to realize, I've always dealt with a lot of IBS and mm-hmm. a lot of like sensitivity with my emotions, with my gut. And during the new moon and during the full moon, my energy are, is just so either like really high or really down or like it's sensitive. So I could mm. be eating the same foods that I'm typically eating. And all of a sudden I'll have like digestive issues and I'm like running to the bathroom or like, I'm like, what is going on? Like, I'm I was like, I don't understand why this food is affecting me the way that it is. Sure. And so I had a great conversation with, um, a friend of mine named Jeff. He's actually the urban barefoot. He's, oh yeah. He's, I met him the other day. Yeah. He's super sweet. And he was doing a chat with fasting. And mm-hmm. so he's like, well, and we were having that conversation. It was a, I think it was a new moon of a party or we we're at a full moon party or something like that. And I was telling him like, I'm literally dealing with like gut sensitivity right now. And so he's like, well, you should try fasting. You know? And he's like, I do three day water fast with, with a group. And I was like, okay, like, you know, what do I have to lose? And, and I yeah. did it and it was good. It was, but I was drinking coffee and like I did it. Yeah. Like it, the rules were a little coffee gray. The fast. rules yeah. were a little gray with what you could and couldn't do. And then Sign like, for that yeah. Fast. Right. Yeah. And then like, I'm like bulletproof coffee, like the whole time. And I'm like, Oh yeah, I love fasting. Like it's really good, you know? And then, you know, transitioning out, I like finally broke it and I ate this huge salad and my stomach was like really upset for a good mm-hmm. day. And, and I was just kind of feeling a little lost with, with, fasting. Um, but I did like, I did honor the spiritual experience that I got out of it and Mm -hmm. just the emotions. And so Bianca had been traveling during that time and she had just gotten back and and I was sharing with her my experience with fasting and she had been fasting for like a month straight on fruit. And I'm like, you're crazy, but cool. (laughs) Like kudos to you, girl. Like, I don't (laughs) think I could do that. And we really started talking about just creating, um, some sort of like regimen or program for fasting to help people ease in and ease out and just do it safely. Mm -hmm. Because that's where I think, um, there needs to be more support. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Altogether. The, getting into it and then leaving, exiting gracefully and being able to transition back into yeah. like a diet. And, you know, I met Bianca last year, uh, just through doTERRA, through friends. Mm-hmm. And she was like, Oh, I go to the beach every morning. I do my meditations every day. I do Kundalini practice. And I had done Kundalini in my earlier twenties when I first started like really getting into spirituality Yeah, and I didn't know how to handle the, the energy that I was creating. Sure. Like I just literally couldn't. Like I would yeah. run eight miles and be like, ah, like I see rainbows. 
clothes everywhere, you know, like the Kundalini was working, but yeah. I wasn't mature enough to like really know how to embody it. And so I started doing sunrise meditations with her and just really dived so much deeper into my spiritual path with her in on the beach. Mm. And we just developed such a beautiful friendship with that. And this year I ended up going on a retreat with her. And so the spirit, the relationship we have with, with our spirituality is so solid that when we started, cause she's a nurse practitioner and right. you know, I'm, we're both practitioners and now we're talking about, you know, health protocols and obviously we have the spirituality background together. Right. And so when we fused it all together, it was like, <laughs> we laugh about this all the time. Like I called her the other day. I'm like, do you realize that we created like a 44 page ebook with like 10 minute videos about education, like in weeks like a, yeah literally yeah. in weeks and it was just like we need to do this right now yeah. and it was like this birthing process during like this whole portal Lionsgate portal in the summer and all the things and yeah it was it was a really cool project to just it was called in to create and and so now being able to guide people with fasting and being able to give them the education mm -hmm. and the tools right because yeah. with fasting it's like yeah okay i'm letting my stomach be empty but then what about all the stuff that's clogged in my in my fat cells right, right? like we need to detox that out we need to help the body move and mobilize because when you're fasting you're not going to be running a marathon i mean some people do yeah and kudos to them but ideally you want to actually let the body rest yeah so that it can detox. So Jen did your yes. the, the Luna fast. And um, I think the, the thing that she, she was like super proud, one that she did it, like that she followed it and she like, she showed up and she did it. And the other thing that I think that she took away that she absolutely loved. And she said, how has this been missing in my life so long is dry brushing. Yes, I love dry brushing. Oh my god! <laughs> I looked over. I hear you, Jen. And I was like, she had this look, and I was like, "What are you doing?" And she was just like dry brushing, and she was so happy. She's like, "It feels so good." Yeah, I love dry brushing. <laughs> so we, so we include daily self care protocols that support lymphatic drainage and also support just having a daily, daily morning routine and an evening routine and winding down and like setting your body up for the day, your mind for the day, your spirit for the day, and then also unwinding at night and like releasing and detoxing on all the different levels. And I myself, like it's changed my routine drastically, you know, mm. like before I would do my morning sadhana, but now it's like, okay, I make sure I do the oil pull, the dry brush, the tongue scrape, like, and then journaling and just really getting all of it out. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I'm happy. Yeah. I'm, I'm super <laughs> happy to have both you and Bianca here because like what I, what I especially love about it is that you have all the spiritual things, but it's, you guys are super grounded in your education, you know? And yeah. you like, I went through acupuncture school, so we're already sort of like leaning that way. But you guys like went into the lion's den and, you know, are like, okay, what is Western medicine teaching us? Right. You're, you're an RD. Is that yeah. your yeah. registered, registered dietitian? And, uh, you guys were like in the, like the meat, in the, yeah, the sauce, in the matrix of like the whole thing in the matrix, literally. Yeah. Yep. And now you can like step out and be like, okay, let's take the good parts from here. And then how do we craft it in a way that speaks to our audience and the impact that we want to make and all that. You know, a lot of, it, with my spiritual path, a lot that has emerged from it and what my understanding is, uh, for me is just being a facilitator and helping people that are what we say, like in the matrix, right? Like they're living in this like spiral of just things that they have to always react to and right. just always trying to figure it out and solve the problem, like never really feeling in control of themselves, of their health. Um, and just really kind of guide them to a softer way of thinking and, and living and being mm -hmm. and helping those that feel like they're ready to just like transform themselves really yeah. because I mean if you're happy where you're at and you're thriving and you're good with it like awesome you know but there's people out there that deep inside I mean I've seen hundreds of patients and it's like God, I, you know, I'm, they're hiring me for nutrition, but I'm just like, you know, like I want to go into meditation with them and really like help them, yeah. you know, just, d just work through all these other things that it's a trickle effect, you know, mm -hmm. and, and with nutrition, I can only, you know, help them tap into how they, the relationship with food. But when they are hiring me private outside of the the practices that I was being hired for, right. the work that I was being hired for, that's where I can really cater and create like that more general plan and see them from, you know. Yeah, some awesome. of the most unhappy people that I think I've ever met are nutritionists that have to work in a hospital. Oh my god! Because they're just I like imagine. they're like I can't like yeah. I can't you know. And I was I was reading this book uh, by 
Tichin and Han, I don't know, however you say his name, right? Mm-hmm. The art of communicating. And mm-hmm. and he was talking like he was talking in the beginning. He's like, Well, the first thing is you gotta know what you're feeling. You know, it's like, so let's talk about meditation, let's talk about following the breath, let's just come back to like the the present, you yeah. know. And I think that I mean with the relationship coaching and stuff that I do, like that's a huge part of it. It's yeah. like, how do you even know what you want if you're not even aware of like how are you feeling and like what's coming up for you? And I certainly with eating too, right? It's yeah. like uh, you you did something oh we did the doTERRA the cleanse and restore right mm-hmm. and you had a video and my mm-hmm. mom was watching it nice. and um and i remember she commented on your video you were asking a question of um like asking yourself like am i hungry or am i thirsty or is there like something what? else yeah like, am i hungry or what different? yeah <laughs> That's my, that's my, like my thing on my little pie chart when I'm teaching people. It's like, yeah. are you hungry or what? Like, what are you truly feeling? Yeah. Yeah. It's- yeah. That was like, my mom was like, oh my God, I never <laughs> thought about it, you know? Yeah. And she would call me sometimes and be, just be like, oh, I just, I'm like, mom, what's going on? She's like, oh, I just don't feel very good. I'm just kind of in a bad mood. And I, I've learned it to be like, well, what did you just eat? And I grew up, she used to bake all the time. And she's like, well, I just baked and I had like three brownies. And I was like, you're sugar crashing, mom. Like, yeah. just, you know, takes the smell of lavender, like go for the walk. Mm, yeah, no, <laughs> I mean, right. it's it's interesting because before you become conscious of, of mindful eating and just mind, become mindful of what you're eating, yeah. it's a reaction. Everything is a reaction. Like, oh, I did this and it upset me or like, bl- like placing the blame instead of realizing, okay, I also have a choice. <laughs> And it's important for me to learn yeah. the the vibration, the energy behind all of the things that I'm eating and how that's affecting my own vibration, my own energy and my cells, because you are yeah. what you eat. Yeah. You know, like my biggest joke is like, I'm probably 80% nuts, you know, like whatever, <laughs> you know, but literally you, you are. Yeah. And if you're looking at processed food, prepackaged, anything that's like synthetic, the vibration of that is, is close to none because mm-hmm. it's not real. Yeah. You know, and if you're looking at, you know, tomatoes, peppers, uh, fruits, they have a very, very high vibration because that's that's what's brought from earth and mm-hmm. so natural. And so that, you know, when it comes to nutrition at this point, I'm just like, listen, like, let's let's clean up that aspect of it. And then, yes, we if you really want, I can count the calories for you. If you really want, I can do the grams. But I'm letting right. you know, like, it is not, that is not just the solution for you. But that creates such a secure container. Like if I'm a client looking to work with somebody, like that creates such a secure container for someone like me, where it's like, yeah, we're going to talk on this level. And like, if you want to play that game, if you yeah. want to look at that, like I got you totally fully trained, can handle that. Yes. No problem. And I offer but both. This is really like, yeah, where, you know, where we need to be. Yeah. I had this experience when I was, um, when I stopped eating chicken, mm-hmm. what I realized was like, I used to, I used to always have this like low level irritability mm. and sometimes it wasn't always low level you know it was like this mm-hmm. perpetual simmer yeah you know? and uh when i stopped eating chicken i used to eat chicken all the time probably every day at least every other day in one of my meals i grew up in the midwest like that's yeah. what we had and uh when i was like i gotta i gotta stop eating this that irritability like almost overnight disappeared wow. within three days it was gone wow and i was just like Nah, that you're, that guy's funny, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but this is much more comfortable, you know, to yeah. to be in my body that way. Yeah, I'm curious to see because I had the implants for so long, and I dealt with like all these gut issues and like my body and like transforming it with something synthetic in my body. Yeah. So now I'm just really curious as to what is gonna come of of everything now. Now that my body's just like free, yeah. I literally feel free. I mean, my heart. In the last two weeks, I don't, I don't think I've cried and, and journaled and just like uh, opened up myself yeah. and just released all this, this gunk literally wow. that was like also sitting inside of me and like that you, you as, as a woman, you don't realize, but like you're suppressing it in your chest, in mm-hmm. your heart mm-hmm. and how that can be such a blockage. Yeah. And so now I'm just curious to know, like. What's the digestive system like? I mean, I'm still healing from the sure. antibiotics, but right. you know, in the in the future, like what you know, like I said, seeing my eyebrow hair grow as much as it has, I'm like, what? Like, Crazy. I'm not doing anything yeah. else. Like, <laughs> I'm recovering, but I used to not pluck as much. And what else has been dormant in my body? Mm-hmm. You know, in my spirit, in my in my essence. And so it's it's really interesting. Um, to see when we're really just letting go of all of this stuff, how that are you can doing also make any specific like chelation? 
Are you doing like any cilantro? Are you doing anything? Like, is there concern about heavy metals being in the body? You didn't have a leak, right? You just, no. you took it out. Okay. No, no, no. I didn't have any issues with that. Um, yeah. I am starting with a binder. That's yeah. something that like we did in the Lunafast to like okay. help also like pull out. Is that that burdock and the, the, is that the parasite thing? Uh, not the parasite. One? No, it oh, was like yeah, a pudding. It was like a pudding that oh, we made. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tell me, tell me. I want to know. I want to know. Jen was like, they told me to get this stuff. And she was like, I can't. Cannot handle it. It smells awful. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's like what, like a very chalky, cementy type of yeah. situation. Um, but that actually helps pull the toxins Got out. Yeah, and so, and so that's what I because they put so much antibiotics. So I, I got very lucky that Bianca actually went with me to the surgery and they pumped me with an IV of antibiotics during the surgery. And so after her, Instead of the oral afterwards, right? Well, they were going to give me the oral oh, they also. Yeah, okay. They do both yeah. to, to prevent, you know, and they gave me, they gave me muscle relaxers. They gave me oxycodone. They gave me um, antibiotics and they gave me something for nausea. I took the muscle relaxers mm -hmm. ultimately for like a few days for and that fun. was it. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, they actually approved me to use CBD and THC. So I was very much like, yeah. you know, enjoying uh, Santa Maria the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> and the doctor, when I got out of the surgery, Bianca was like, listen, you just gave her a ton of antibiotics. And like, I know that she like does not need more antibiotics. Can we just use essential oils? And he said, yes. Awesome. So I ended up not taking another round of antibiotics because I mean, my gut is still recovering from that. So yeah. just being able to use the oils and it's so funny. I literally came home from my surgery and I like Bianca went to go get the prescriptions just in case. Cause they yeah. said like, if there is an issue, you sure. have to take it. Right. And I just like pulled out like all of my crystals and I laid in bed and I just put on this like mantras and I just laid there feeling the edible and I'm just like, thank you, God. <laughs> like, I'm like healing. I'm like having this like profound journey. And like, yeah. it's been so spiritual healing for me, just releasing it, just going through that surgery and, and allowing my spell, myself the space, mm -hmm. which has been hard because my go-to is work. Like sure. I t when I feel at like me, movement and work is like so natural for me. So to go in and, and say no mm -hmm. and like log offline and, and all of that was was an opportunity for me to just like go deeper and I didn't feel pain. You know, I didn't have to take nausea medication. I didn't have to take oxycodone or like any of that stuff. And so yeah. I'm grateful for that. That's amazing. Yeah. And it's amazing. I think our relationship to pain, you know, it's like if, if this hadn't been an elective surgery, I mean, it, Mm -hmm. Elective is interesting, right? Because mm -hmm. uh, there's that spiritual calling where it's like, I don't have a choice anymore. Like mm -hmm. I need to do this, but it's still like in the category, it'd be elective, right? So because Absolutely. if it's elective, the relationship with that can be so different than if you like had to, or if it was an emergency yes. or if like, if you went in, if something had happened and you were resentful of your doctors and all that, it's all like it. the relationship to pain and recovery is so different. And you know that that ultimately stems with the relationship with yourself. Obviously right. it's a reflection. And so I was in the BII chat in the Facebook chat and it was a very heavy energy. Yeah. It was like, wow. I mean, it's unfortunate that it's so allowed to have implants placed into our bodies, you know, mm. and that they're not discussing what goes on and the effects. And I understand that there are definitely going to be side effects to this. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, it's so important for us to take responsibility for the choices that we have made and make peace with that mm -hmm. instead of blaming yeah. externally. And so it can be really, really easy to fall into like being a victim in your whole scenario. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But you, what you're saying, like we have elected every single choice that we've made with our lives. Right. And we also have to be okay with that. And so yeah. that like energy was very, very very heavy to feel, you know, how, how much easier it is to like blame and blame and blame. And yes, the implants are something that is very bad for your body. Yeah. Honestly, yes, it is. But you know, we're making a choice. We're made, I'm glad you got on the blog. I'm glad you're making a choice and you're getting yourself out of the situation because mm -hmm. I mean, if you see the before and afters of some woman, most the women there, it's like night and day and you see the puffiness reduce. You see how the implants were literally killing them. Wow. Literally killing them. Like the yeah. inflammation markers just go down. Yeah. And so 
there needs to be more education on that. And I think now it's not even trendy anymore. Thank God. So yeah. it's like, whew, we're stepping into a new phase and people are becoming awakened, uh, really. And so I, I did go into those, the blogs and chat with those women and be like, Hey, listen, like, you know, just stay positive and like really try to put in some like positive light. Like it's okay. Like you're, you got this, mm -hmm. you know, like nothing's out of your control. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's what more of us need to hear. You yeah. Know? Especially in those situations where you're scared. Right. You're scared. Yep. You know, like I was scared, but I said, you know what? I got this money saved up. I'm making this choice. I'm yeah. going for it. Like it is what it is. You know, God forbid, like something would have happened. And I would have had a leak or like, you know, some sort of thing where it's mm -hmm. like an emergency. And, right. You know, you're dealing with that on top of it. It's, it's intense. Yeah. It's so much. It's so and much. I pray. What? I pray for those women. Yeah. Well, and I, you know, I really appreciate you coming on here and sharing, sharing the story. And it just seems to fit so well in with like the fasting work that you're doing yeah. in the sense that like when I've fasted, it's, you know, it's like, it's removing a key variable that like dictates our mood. <laughs> and so by getting rid of those like ups and downs of some of the blood sugar that's coming in and, you know, the major fluctuations, it gives me an opportunity to just kind of see like, okay, what's here? Like what's, what's in me, what's in my heart, what's there? You know, and like one of the biggest transformations that I had of like shifting from when I was like really holding onto a victim story was when I was fasting. Mm. Cause it's like you get rid of the food and then it's just like, okay, like where's my mind going and like what's here, you know? Isn't it funny where the brain goes? Yeah. <laughs> It's like funny, funny on the good days. <laughs> yeah, totally. It's like, I literally called Bianca day two and I'm like, I can't do this. My teeth are going to fall out. Like I'm losing calcium. She's like, dude, like you're totally fine. And I'm like, I don't know, Bianca, I don't know if I can do it. You know, like yeah. no coffee this time around. Yeah. And so it's like, you really, your fears. Oh my God. And I love the way that Bianca calls it, you know, it's a healing crisis. Right. And that's what we're really going going through it's like we're freaking out because yeah. we're healing we're going through a, a healing and we have to just trust the yeah. process well and you guys you created a, a container i mean talking to bianca mm -hmm. and then with jen too it's like you know you guys have your group calls and you have like a community yeah. so that people if they are listening to this and they're nervous about it, it's like they don't have to go through it alone you, know, you guys have a lot of support and and resources and you know certainly with bianca's experience she's like a veteran faster <laughs> She's a trooper, man. I give that girl. I'm like, kudos to you, B. Like, she's she's she's, she's the boss. It. She's the boss. You know, yeah, like I'm the master man. Yeah. I'm like, okay, let's make the ebook. Let's make it right. fun. Let's make it pretty. Like, I you know I've created programs and I enjoy doing that. So right. putting our minds together and like really, she's a projector. I'm a manifester. Yeah. So learning how to really work with our energies and be able to communicate a message together effectively was was quite the journey and really fun too, because you learn so much about yourself mm -hmm. and the fasting. I mean, <laughs> we were so crazy though. Like we're like, okay, so we designed this thing and we we have like a month before August, the end of August, and we're going to launch it then. And so now we're going to do the fast ourselves at the end of July. And we're going to keep working while we design this program while fasting. And like day one, we both just like sat there. <laughs> <laughs> day two, we just surrendered. We're like, yeah. yeah, you know, maybe these three days of water fasting aren't the most ideal days to be like Super putting our thinking caps on right. and like getting creative. You know, it was just kind of like a, oh shit, like let my body do its thing, mm -hmm. you know? And so, um, yeah, it was a good time. Awesome. <laughs> and on that note, um, I tell people how they can find you and, um, you know, let them, uh, let them sign up and become part of the, uh, the fasting movement. Yes. We would love to have you guys be in the, in the fasting movement. So right now we're in the, in the process of finishing our website. So it will be the lunafast.com. You can connect with us on social media through the lunafast. And also for my channel, it's feed me health, feed me health. And so the website, same thing, feedmehealth.com. And those are all my channels. I have a YouTube channel. So you guys can jump in there and see some recipes and you'll find more info on my Instagram. That's kind of where I'm more hubbed That's at. That's where everybody so. goes. Now. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having me. Thank you guys for listening as always. Be sure to check out Feed Me Health on Instagram. And um, if you love the show, please put a great rating, share it with anyone that you know that um, is either struggling with the, the implants or thinking about fasting or all of the things. Um, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to spread the word about the show. And thanks for listening. We'll catch you next time. Adios.